welcome to The Space Guide, your monthly look at what's going on in the night sky and beyond. February 2025 has some incredible celestial events that you're not going to want to miss. A planetary parade, an occultation, and a meteor shower, and also some really cool updates from the asteroid Bennu. If you're new here, I'm Sarah Matthews, and I'm an astrophotographer and former space industry professional. I've spent many years photographing space and helping to develop new space technologies, so I'm really excited to be kind of be bringing those two domains together in this new series. Every month, I'll guide you through the best astrophotography targets, must-see astronomy events, and the latest space and science news. And this series will definitely be evolving, and I would love to hear your input, so what would you like to see covered in a series like this? Let me know down in the comments, and without further ado, grab a snack and let's see what's up in space this month. We're going to kick this party off with our closest celestial neighbor, the moon. And this month's full moon is called the snow moon, but if you are in the southern hemisphere, that's not going to make a lot of sense because you are in your summer months. So yeah, you can call it the no snow moon or whatever else you would like to call it. Either way, it's a great time to capture moonlit landscapes. What's a full moon without a last quarter moon? Last quarter moon will be February 20th, and this is an excellent time to photograph and observe it, mostly because of the really dramatic shadows brought to you by the Terminator line, not the Terminator, the movie character. The Terminator line basically separates the moon's day and night, and it really just makes craters and mountaintops pop because of all the contrast. If you've got yourself a camera and a telescope or a camera lens, you've got yourself all the bakings to capture some serious detail. But you can also use some binoculars as well as a telescope and eyepieces. New Moon is scheduled for the end of the month, February 28th, and with that comes the darkest skies of the month. Behold, deep space imagers and observers, this is the best time to capture faint and dim objects like galaxies and nebulae. And speaking of deep space, if you're in the Northern Hemisphere, February is almost synonymous with the constellation Orion, the superstar constellation of the winter. I'm not sure if that's the official title, but I'm just gonna throw that out there for now. But because the Orion constellation is at its highest point in the night sky, which is where it's crossing the meridian, that means you have less atmosphere that you have to image through. So you're gonna get a lot more details without the atmosphere obscuring all those details. For wide field targets, you can't go wrong with the Orion Nebula or the Horsehead Nebula. If you're looking for something a little bit deeper in your life, you can capture the Flame Nebula on its own or a beautiful reflection nebula called M78. The Orion Nebula is one of the best targets to both photograph and look through an eyepiece because it's so bright, and it's also one of those targets that you can image with narrowband filters or without a filter. If you are in a lot of light pollution and you are imaging emission nebulae, then I would definitely recommend picking up some narrowband filters, like this dual narrowband filter that I have right here, or this other filter right here. Alrighty, for all of my southern summer goers, or people in the southern hemisphere, let's talk about deep space targets that you can image in the month of February. We of course have one of the most beautiful targets in the night sky, which is very subjective, but it is very beautiful, Eta Carina Nebula, and it's going to be great for wide field shots. And if you go a little bit wider, you can even include the Running Chicken Nebula. If you're trying to zoom in, you can try the Keyhole Nebula, which is a dark structure within the Carina Nebula. But wait! There's more Southern Hemisphere summer goers. There's actually a meteor shower that's been going on since January 28th and will be going on through February 21st. The peak of the Alpha Centaurus meteor shower is going to be on February 8th, and you can expect around six meteors per hour. The best place to watch, of course, is going to be in the Southern Hemisphere, so Australia, Southern countries of Africa, or South America. Equatorial regions, you might be able to spot a few, but it's probably not going to be ideal. And of course, if you're in the Northern Hemisphere, you're going to have to wait till the next meteor shower. Some quick viewing tips. Look for the constellation Centaurus, which rises higher in the sky after midnight, and get away from as many city lights as you possibly can. If you're looking to photograph it, I would recommend using a camera lens around 14 to 22 millimeters if you want to get the entire sky. Take kind of long exposures, anywhere between 10 to 30 seconds and set your camera's ISO settings around 800 to 3200, depending on your camera model. February brings us a lot of cool planetary events and things to see and photograph. <laughs> we have a lunar occultation of Mars, which is basically where Mars goes behind the moon and it reappears from our vantage point here on Earth. This event will be on February 9th, 2025. But not everywhere on Earth is going to be able to see this occultation. If you're in the high latitude regions of Canada, as well as Greenland, Iceland, higher latitudes of Europe, parts of China, and Russia, you should be able to see it. If you're a photographer, I would highly recommend taking a time lapse of Mars going behind the moon and then reappearing because that's really cool. And if you are a visual astronomer, then of course use your telescope and binoculars. 
In addition, the planet Venus will be at its brightest magnitude on February 16th, blazing at an incredible negative 4.6 magnitude in the western sky just after sunset. And while it dazzles our night sky, just remember that Venus is a scorching hellscape, with its thick atmosphere packed with greenhouse gases, trapping heat and making it the hottest planet in the solar system. Service temperatures soar to 900 degrees Fahrenheit, which is hot enough to melt lead. And while Venus shines at its brightest, Saturn is about to disappear, so this is going to be your last chance to see it before it sinks into the sun's glare. If you have clear skies, try spotting Saturn low in the west just after sunset. Before we get to the really cool updates from the Bennu asteroid, let's talk about the seven planet planetary parade that's happening on February 28th. Planets in the lineup are Mercury, Venus, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. A planetary parade happens when multiple planets appear to align in the sky from our viewpoint on Earth. But in reality, they're not actually lined up in space, they just appear that way from our perspective. And this happens because all the planets orbit the Sun on roughly the same flat plane known as the ecliptic. As they move in their orbits, there are times when they temporarily line up from our viewpoint, creating these stunning celestial events. This February's event is special because all seven major planets will be visible at the same time. While they won't form a perfect straight line, they'll spread out in a beautiful arc across the sky following the ecliptic. Some, like Venus and Jupiter, will shine brightly, while Uranus and Neptune will require a telescope or binoculars to spot. The best time to view it in the Northern Hemisphere is going to be around sundown, so make sure that you have a full view of the entire horizon so that you can see everything. Alright, let's wrap this party up with some really cool space news from the asteroid Bennu, straight from NASA's OSIRIS-REx mission. NASA's OSIRIS-REx mission has returned with extraordinary findings from asteroid Bennu, a 4.5 billion year old asteroid, offering new clues about the origins of life in our solar system. Among the discoveries, organic compounds, including 14 of the 20 amino acids that life on Earth uses to make proteins, as well as all five nucleobases, the fundamental components of DNA and RNA. These molecules are the very blueprint in life, raising profound questions about whether life's ingredients are more widespread in the cosmos than we ever imagined. But there's more. Scientists have also identified minerals that formed through interactions with liquid water, which suggests that Bennu's parent body, which was likely a much larger asteroid or protoplanet, once had the right conditions for prebiotic chemistry, the very processes that may have led to life on Earth. So why does this matter? Well, this strengthens the idea that life's essential ingredients may have come from space brought here by ancient asteroids after all, which would basically mean that we're the aliens. And while Bennu is a time capsule from the early solar system, it also serves as a reminder of the potential hazards asteroids pose. NASA's latest calculations estimate a 1 in 2700 chance that Bennu could impact Earth in the year 2182. And though the risk is low, the consequences could be severe, making planetary defense a priority for future space missions. These discoveries not only bring us closer to understanding life's cosmic origins, but also reinforce the importance of asteroid research, not only for science, for exploration, but also for the safety of our planet. So that's what we're covering in February 2025. Let me know down in the comments what else you would like to see, and until next month's video, I hope you all have clear skies.